One of the big soil issues we see in fields all over the world is having a high level of sodium. What we're talking about here is if you run a base saturation test and your sodium levels are above 1%, that's trouble. Too much sodium, basically too much salt out in your soil, is going to end up hurting you, hurting your crop, hurting your roots, hurting microbial activity. It's all a bad thing. We've got to figure out how to get that sodium level below 1%. Now, don't get me wrong, most fields are okay. But until you run a test on your soil, you don't really know. And if you do run a test and find that sodium is above 1%, you've got to get it fixed as soon as you can. You know, we could have almost talked about this in a farm basics time. You know, high levels of sodium are bad. I think if we just made that statement, 99% of consumers out there would say, oh, you're right. If I've got too much salt in my food, that's bad for my body. It's the same thing with plants. If they've got too much salt, in that soil, too much sodium in that soil, that can be a big challenge. There's a few things about sodium in soils that can be problems, but the big one for me anyway, is just that that sodium clogs things up. And all of a sudden we have trouble, especially with water movement into soils. For example, if we've got really high levels of sodium, sometimes we just have trouble with water even penetrating into the soil. That can obviously be a big problem in a hurry. Okay, so let's talk about you've identified in your soil test, you've got sodium over 1% what do you do? Now you'll talk to some people that'll say, well, if it's a tremendously high sodic soil, there's no fix to it. You know, I get so tired of people saying, well, there's just nothing you can do and they throw up their hands and well, you just gotta deal with that. Look, I get it if it's rented ground and you say, okay, I can either rent it or uh, avoid it, sure, I'm, I'm gonna skip the problem. But if I own the ground, there is absolutely a fix to it. Number one starts with having good drainage. Remember, when sodium turns to salt, salts are leachable. In other words, if I have good drainage through my soil, that sodium and that salt is gonna flush out of there. That's exactly what we're looking for here. So you've gotta start with good drainage. That means most likely you're gonna need to put tile in your ground. And if it's really heavy soil, high cation exchange capacity numbers, you might have to have tile every 25 feet, maybe every 40 feet. Well, chances are, if we're talking about farm ground here with high sodium levels, that sodium level didn't get high overnight. It happened over a period of time. The fix is going to be the same way. You're not going to fix it overnight. There's not one thing that Brian and I could say, oh, put on a pint per acre of this product and your problems all go away. I wish it was that easy, but it's really not. So you have to look at this as, okay, uh, here's a problem that happened over a long period of time. I'm going to start making the right choices so I can get rid of this problem. So Brian talked about, well, we need to install some drainage so we can get rid of some of that sodium over time. That's important. The other side of that coin is whatever's happening to increase sodium levels in that field, you have to identify what that is. For some of you, it may be, well, I'm putting on manure in the same spot every year and over and over and over again, this manure has a high level of sodium and I'm just putting on more than what my crop is actually using. It doesn't need a whole lot of sodium. And so I'm building it up over time that way. Maybe there's some other issues that are going on on your farm and reasons why that sodium level keeps building up. Whatever those reasons are, just make the next decision the right decision. So you can't change whatever, 20 or 30 or 40 years of history, but what you can change is this year, what you do to that field and you say, look, here's something that's adding sodium. I can take that away. Now my sodium percentage may only drop just a tiny little bit, but it's moving the right direction. And if we keep doing that over five years, 10 years, 20 years, making those right calls and not increasing our problem, but rather starting to fix it that way, that's another thing that you have to do. Okay, so usually once you fix that drainage problem, then you're going to need to add some gypsum calcium sulfate. It does two things for you. The sulfate portion is going to combine with the sodium to form sodium sulfate, which is a salt, and that's going to leach out of your soil profile. The other thing is you're replacing that sodium there with calcium, which is a nice big molecule, which gives you more pore space in your soil. So that's a good deal. Just take a look at your soil test. If you're way loaded up on sulfur, though, maybe you don't need to do this step. But that is one common thing that people will do with sodic soils. Number one, fix the drainage. Number two, add gypsum. Beyond that, I guess you've just got to take a look at what else is really going on in your soil. Like Darren said, you know, maybe there's something else, too much manure. But I think too about irrigation. Sometimes we don't have good water and we're pumping water out of the ground that's not very good for us. So maybe you need to either find another water source, go deeper with your well, something like that, or treat that water. You got to look at what you're doing to your soil. 
soil? Well, once again, high sodium soils absolutely can be managed, so start taking those steps on your farm if you have high sodium soils. One other thing you want to watch for is our weed of the week. It can be a big problem. We'll show you how to stop it coming up later in the show.